Research Institute and the Center for Cyber and Homeland Security at George Washington University here in Washington. He's also a former FBI agent. He testified today before the Senate Intelligence Commi uh, Committee on Russian meddling in the U.S. presidential election. Clint, thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me. What, what is Putin's objective in all of this? The ultimate objective is to destroy democracies from the inside out. What he wants to do is erode trust and sow divisions in the U.S. electorate. That way, when we are fighting amongst ourselves, it actually discredits those people that are elected and those institutions they represent. So when he sees the fighting that's going on right now, for example, in the House Intelligence Committee, he sits back and says, this is exactly what I wanted to happen. If I'm, if I'm Putin, he's seeing dissension between Republicans, Democrats, now between the Congress and the executive branch. This is a dream come true for him in terms of fomenting chaos such that we can't really focus on his active measures and we can't focus on his foreign policy. Is there a sense, and you've done a lot of research into this, you're an expert, uh, that the candidate, the then candidate Donald Trump, uh, or any of his campaign associates were aware of or involved with any of these Russians in these cyber attacks? What we can't tell is whether President Trump realized he was actually citing Russian propaganda at times, which did happen. But what did happen was his campaign manager cited Russian propaganda seven days after it had been debunked in, in August of 2016. We see lots of lines that are pushed by the Kremlin that are fed into information briefings. And so the other part is the coordination. We see hacks, we see leaks, and those are very synchronized or come out very quickly with the campaign back in August, September, October. And so that tends to lean to the belief that, yeah, there was coordination. So you, you think that, uh, that Trump associates, even the candidate himself, were citing what, what we would call fake news spread out by these fake Russian news organizations? It goes both ways. Sometimes they would cite fake news that was put out by Russian state propaganda. Whether they did that wittingly or unwittingly, you can't tell. But other times they would put out falsehoods, and those falsehoods would then be used as talking points by the Russians. So the circle plays back on itself in a reverse direction. Is the Trump administration now, and the president's been in office for more than 60 days, is it handling this investigation appropriately from your, from your vantage point? No. A great concern to me is this report that you just had at the top of the hour which is that two people in the White House might have cherry-picked intelligence that could have been part of active investigations and gave it to somebody outside of the normal process. You're uh, talking is, about the New York Times report. Yes, the New York Times report. Two senior White House officials, according to the New York Times, uh, in, supposedly, according to the New York Times, invited the chairman of the House Intelligence Committee, Devin Nunes, to come over and take a look at this intelligence. Yes, and that would be circumventing normal investigative processes. When that breaks down, when we see that cherry picking, it even further confuses fact and fiction. And what we need from our executive, chief executive, is fact over fiction. And we need to have confidence in what the process is and that we're getting all the information. So what are the consequences of all of this? What you're going to end up having in is huge political um, partisanship on both sides. The other part is you're going to have an executive branch and a legislative branch, potentially, that don't work together. So you can't pass budgets. You can't come around a foreign policy, in particular, to counter Russia. I, t I watched your testimony today before the uh, Senate Intelligence Committee, and it was fascinating. One thing you said, uh, one way, uh, in your words, to trace Russian influence in the presidential election here in the United States is to, in your words, follow the trail of dead Russians. Yes. What did you mean? Since the election, there has been a series, probably seven to eight Russians, uh, either that are official pr people of the government or were un investigated, um, that have turned up dead. You've had ambassadors turn up dead under suspicious circumstances. You've had people at different cybersecurity companies arrested unexpectedly. If you follow that trail, that's where most of those leaks are that are allegedly coming from the uh, XMI6 dossier. That's what I believe those to be. You think the FBI uh, is fully equipped to do a great investigation into all of this? Because you heard James Comey, the FBI director, say a week a week ago, they, they are in, engaged right now in a very serious criminal investigation. I, I think the FBI has the capability to do it, but all of this political barding, uh, this cherry picking of intelligence from inside the government, using it for political purposes with these congressional committees, that just derails investigations. How on earth could the FBI do a good investigation when intelligence is possibly being leaked from the inside of the government in a different location? It's very hard to run down leads or, or come to any decisive conclusions. There were a few chilling moments during the testimony today before the Senate Intelligence Committee where you uh, even expressed concern about your own security. Tell us about that. 
Right. I, I know that I've been targeted either by trolling attacks. I've been notified by the FBI uh, through the think tank, Foreign Policy Research Institute, that they were notified I've been a target of malware attacks. And, and I know I'm on that list. Uh, if I speak today, my bank accounts could very well be compromised. I could be discredited through uh, compromising materials, some true, some false. Um, but I think the biggest concern is that I'm not confident right now that the U.S. government would actually come to bat for me. You're not confident? No. I, I'm, I've seen President Trump uh, call for Russia to leak emails against a, you know, a political opponent. I've seen him discredit the U.S. Intelligence Committee to cite conspiracies that he's seen on his Twitter feed. So if I say things that the Trump administration doesn't like or that are counter to Putin, I'm not sure that it's not, you know, Trump first, Russia second, and the rest of America third. Because I, I got to take a quick break, but what you seem to be suggesting is there still some coordination uh, in your in your analysis between the Russians no. and and Trump uh, associates? No, I, I think it's that in terms of the political bartering that's going on right now, it's opportunism. And so whenever there is a theme or a message that someone wants to push, whether it comes from Russia, uh, some sort of other fake news outlet or it comes from a political party, they will push falsehoods to achieve political objectives before they'll push the truth for the American people. Stand by, Clint, because there's, there's more questions I have. Your testimony today was fascinating. Before